We're going to Rockstar episode 88. Are you a work at home rock star or do you dream of becoming one? Then you found the right podcast. Your host, Tim Melanson, talks with successful work at home rock stars to learn their secrets and help you in your journey. Are you ready to rock? Here's Tim. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Work at Home Rockstar podcast. Today's guest has been working from home for years now since high school. She's a serial entrepreneur and she owns an online Facebook ad agency who helps businesses and entrepreneurs put their product or service in front of the right client or customer so they can scale their business strategically and spend time doing what they love to do, which sounds awesome to me. I'm excited today to be rocking with Melissa Jakubovic. Melissa, are you ready to rock? I am so ready to rock. Excellent. So first question for you is, how did you first become a self-employed work-at-home rock star? Well, like you said, thanks for that great introduction. I'm a serial entrepreneur. So in third grade, I was selling friendship bracelets on the playground, and it just evolved from there. (laughs) When I was in high school, I decided that my passion for dance um, was something I wanted to share with younger kids. So I went into schools in my area and asked if I could teach dance classes. So I taught folk dancing at the dance um, in the schools during their recess and during after school programs. Eventually I was hired to do performance choreography and I had my own dance company and performing troupe. From there, I became a DJ because I loved playing music and getting people to move their bodies. And that just naturally progressed into that. And then I was trained in yoga and I had my own yoga company. So basically everything evolved and came from the same thing, which was getting people to move their bodies, set to music, have a good time, and giving myself the freedom to do what I wanted to do on my own schedule. And then I got into health and life coaching from there. And I was coaching people online and getting them really motivated to lose weight and get healthy and really go down into their core, figuring out why they are unhealthy and unhappy with the life coaching that helped. And I was running Facebook ads to get that online business up and running. And then from there, all of my entrepreneurial friends were asking me, oh, you're having so much success with Facebook ads. Can you do that for me? So I started doing that for them and eventually came to where I am now with my Facebook ad agency. So for me, it's just been following a passion, going towards it, and then letting one thing lead to the next and just let it happen naturally. That's so awesome, man. Isn't it <laughs> funny? You really do have to be a certain type of personality to be able to be self-employed like that. Cause like you say, it's not necessarily that you had this path that you had already had figured out. It's like you just have, you do one thing and then it leads to another and then it leads to another. And so you have to be really okay with that uncertainty, right? Absolutely. And you also have to be open to all the opportunities and possibilities that are there for you. And really, when you feel that spark to just go after it and not just wait around, "Mm, should I do it? If you feel that in in the pit of your stomach, like that's what you got to do. That's your instinct and you've got to do it. So that's what I do. I just follow my instinct. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know, I used to play a lot of sports when I was much younger. And one of the sports that I play is hockey. I'm a Canadian. And they always say that when, you know, when something's happening, uh, when someone's coming to hit you, you always want to lean into the hit because if you start to go back from it and you hesitate, that's when you get hurt. And I find that works really, that really like lends itself well to business because it's the same thing. When something's happening, when something's coming at you, if you kind of go, oh, I'm not sure, well, then it's going to, it's going to roll you over. Whereas Absolutely. You it, that's when you really see some, some things happening, right? Absolutely. That's when you need to go after it the most. I feel like when you feel like something's coming at you, you need to jump on that opportunity right away before it leaves. Right. Now, so for all these things that happen, I'm sure you've never made a mistake, right? (laughs) Well, I think that being successful equals a series of mistakes leading up to where you are now. And I make mistakes all the time and I still do because that's how you learn and one failure leads to the next success. So lots of mistakes. So what would you consider to be the biggest one that's made an impact and what did you learn from it? Honestly, I think my biggest mistake is not building a team fast enough or soon enough. I would have built a team much sooner if I had realized the impact it would have on my business. But 
being an entrepreneur and wanting to do everything and get my hands really into all aspects of the business, it really slows the growth of my business down. So I've built a team of people who are able to take on certain tasks within the business. So even if I have a sick day or my kids need me to pick them up from school because they're not feeling well, my business doesn't collapse. I have people that can run all different aspects of the business and I can oversee everything. So I would say building my team sooner would probably been better because I'd be further ahead, but I'm grateful for everything that I have and how I've gotten here. And I have that as a lesson that I can use to propel me forward in the future. Wow. I think it's so funny that of all the interviews that I've done, it seems like there's a really common theme. I'd say more than 90% of people say that their biggest mistake is either not hiring somebody fast enough or not seeking help fast enough which is pretty much the same thing. It just depends on whether you're delegating or whether you're hiring a coach, but it all comes down to having the right people around you, which is interesting because when we think about self-employment, you think about, you know, solo, you think about yourself, but really none of these people that are getting success are really doing it by themselves if they want to get to, you know, far in their business. I, but I find that uh, interesting that people are neglecting to do that or scared to do that. Why do you think you, uh, or what was it that clicked in your head that made you think, okay, I need to do something about this, uh, like going from the stubborn, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to hire anybody to now hiring people? I don't know if it was being stubborn or if it was being naive, but I just thought I have the great idea. I have the passion and the drive. I have the hustle. I'm resourceful. I'm going to get this done. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, you have to send emails and you have to speak to clients and you have to book your own appointments. And there's just so many things to do that it's not possible for one person to do it. So I think part of the fear maybe would have been, I don't have the funds for it. I don't have money to hire someone full time. But what's interesting is a lot of people don't need a full time job. They can be subcontractors. They can do per project. They could help you out with certain things here and there. And once you, they take the load off of your shoulders, you can focus more on things that are more in line with what you're either good at, what your strengths are, or what you can do more quickly to support the business. So I think it's really important to have support. Even if I'm the one with the idea and it's my company, if I didn't have all the people under me helping me, this business would not move fast enough to make it worthwhile. We'd be losing money every day. So the more people you add on, it's like a, uh, everyone holding hands and we can all do it together kind of like an assembly line. We can get something in on Monday and get it out on Friday. Whereas if I do it on my own, I'd get it on Monday and two months later I might be able to produce something. Mm -hmm. Well, the analogy that I, that we use here in the work at home rockstar is about your band. And so, you know, in a band, in order to make beautiful music, you need multiple people doing multiple things. <laughs> you know, you need your drummer, you need your, your bass player, you need your singer and you need your guitar player or whatever other instruments you have, and everybody is an expert at their own thing to move the whole uh, song forward. So I'm wondering, like in, uh, in your business, who is your band that makes your music flow? So um, I'm the band manager, but I have my hands in all these different areas. I have copywriters. I have content writers who manage social media. I have... Um, designers we have coders we have so many people we have nine people on our team right now and actually before this recording I was doing several interviews to add on more people to my team and now it's kind of become an obsession I want more and more and more and more people on my team and then I see tremendous growth as soon as I add another flow of people into my team so constantly growing could never do it alone so how do you find good people well, since it's an online business, I keep everything online. I love how the internet has created this global community. I find people all over the place, whether it's in very specific Facebook groups or work from home groups or virtual assistant groups. I use Fiverr sometimes. I use Upwork sometimes. I even post on Craigslist and Facebook. I, I run ads for things. So they really come from all over the place. I have people on my team in all areas of the world. I have people in Pakistan and Copenhagen, all over the U.S. I have people in Canada, in London. So 
it's really interesting. Everyone's on a different time zone, but everyone has the same passion and drive. And I can find them through all these social media networks. So have you had any bad experiences with people that you've hired? No, actually. I am very specific with what I want, what skills I want, who I hire. I want not only the person that I hire to have similar interests, I definitely want them to be skilled, but I want them to be like a friend, someone that I know I can just speak to. I don't want it to ever feel like I'm your manager and you're going to do what I say. And it's not that way. Working from home is for the point of being flexible and making your own hours. So people on my team have families. And as long as we hit the deadlines at the right time, you know, I want them to have family time. Even when I put ads out for, um, for new people to come on board, I say in the advertisements, I want you to understand the importance of family time. I don't want them to be working all hours of the night and stressed out because this is supposed to be fun. So I want to make sure it's somebody that I get along well with and that we communicate well because communication is key. So I have not had a bad experience yet. Knock on wood. <laughs> well, you're, yeah, you are definitely, definitely a minority. I think most people will end up hiring some, some of the wrong people first. But I, I think that you kind of answered the question there is because you actually do have a specific uh, set of maybe questions or something that you would ask somebody to find out if they're the right person for you instead of just you know throwing it out there you know, grabbing the first person that you see type thing, right? Absolutely. I can interview for one position like seven to 10 different people until I find the right fit. I want to make sure there's a, like a spark and I'm like, oh, this is the right one. And then it works out really well. Awesome. So now I'm wondering about your jam room. So, you know, us entrepreneurs working from home, there's lots of different types of offices <laughs> that people jam in like do you have like a specific door to office or do you work at the kitchen table or are you out in the back patio like what, what is it that you uh that you jam well i love variety so i do have an at-home office space um it has pictures of my kids artwork from the kids it has my goals hanging up i have chill out music playing i light incense and candles and I have my personal manifesto hanging on the wall. Um, it also has some whiteboards so I can jot down thoughts and ideas and draw out sales funnels and things like that. But then, you know, if it's a gorgeous day outside, I'm going to make sure I'm somewhere where there's Wi-Fi and I'm outdoors. I love hot weather. And so if it's like 85 degrees or more, I make sure I'm outside. Some days I need to drive the kids to one place or another. I'm a single mom, so my schedule is really around the kids. And if I need to drop them off at one place and get on a call 15 minutes later, then I'm going to find a local coffee shop with Wi-Fi. Cool. And have you, like, at a coffee shop, have you done, like, what kind of business do you do there? I'll just follow up on emails, speak to clients on the phone. I've even designed full sales funnels from the coffee shop. I don't drink coffee, so it is a little bit of a challenge when I go to a coffee shop. I have to find something I can buy so I can sit there all day. And sometimes I go to the public library. They have study rooms that are quiet, and I can do all my work there, too. Nice. So you said you have kids. Uh, how does yeah. that work in the whole grand scheme of things? Like, how do you schedule your work, or do you schedule your work around your kids? Like, uh, do they, like are they around when you're working as well? Like, how, how do you make that all work? I think that's one of my biggest reasons for being an entrepreneur and having my own companies is because I could not handle that nine to five. <laughs> if I did a nine to five job and I'm a single mom of two kids, my kids would be wearing dirty clothes. They would never have food to eat. <laughs> I want to be able to go to the grocery store in the middle of the day and go grocery shopping, make some dinner for them, do the laundry. So when my kids are at school or at summer camp, that's when I get the bulk of my work done. Um, when they're home afterwards, dinner, bath, bed, there's no phone time for me. I'm not talking to clients. That's my kid time. It's my family time. And I reserve that for us because I think that's most of the reason why people who work from home who have kids do that is you want to be able to make your own schedule. And I enjoy my time with my kids. And then after they go to sleep, if I'm not completely zonked, I'll start my second shift. So like 8 p.m. till midnight, that's my most creative time. And so once they're asleep, I get going and then I have to force myself to fall asleep because I'll be on a roll. And that's, I feel like the 
the ongoing struggle. Are we going to go to bed early or are we going to wake up early? <laughs> which one, go to bed late? You know, which one is, where am I going to be the most productive? And I like my nighttime hours a lot. So I try to work around the kids. But like I said, if they're sick from school that day and I have a phone call, they know, you know, I'll rest in the bed while, while they call me Ima, while Ima is on the phone. Um, and I try to work my schedule around my kids because that's the most important thing. Love it. Yeah, no, we're the same. I, I uh, actually have a 10 year old now and he's been, uh, well, I've been self-employed since he was one. <laughs> and so uh, awesome. yeah, a lot of the same thing. I have a daycare as well that I use and, uh, you know, lots of work during the day, but when he's home, you know, you've got a few hours to actually spend with him. But isn't it great that like when there's like, you know, the school events and all those other things, you can totally go. <laughs> there's no one you have to ask. You can just make it happen. Right. Absolutely. And sometimes the school has like volunteer opportunities, come inside and bake this with us. And I can always jump on those opportunities. And those are the moments that, you know, that's why I became a mom to be around my kids. So I can carpool uh, or chaperone the field trips. I can do whatever I need to do for them. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love it too. That's, that's why one of the main reasons why I became self-employed as well is I wanted to actually spend more time with my with my son and this that definitely allows you to do it however you know that being said you know as you mentioned i also work late at night sometimes as well and so there is certain sacrifices that you have to make i mean it's not a you know some people like the whole idea of going nine to five and then five o'clock you're done for the rest of the night being self-employed means that yeah we have flexibility but we also have to burn the kind of candle of both ends sometimes right absolutely and that's a struggle with um being tired or giving your attention to other people in your life, but it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, for certain personalities, like I'm sure we both are, uh, you know, you're kind of a bit of a workaholic anyway, so it's kind of fun to work. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. And it's your own projects. You're working on your own projects. You're not working on somebody's project that they're like throwing on your desk. I need this by Friday. It's your own creative spark that's starting it all. So it's kind of exciting. Absolutely. So now what about like habits and rituals? I know that, uh, you know, for musicians, we have sound check songs, we have warm up songs, we have things that kind of bring us to state. Uh, I'm wondering as an entrepreneur, like are there certain like routines or rituals that you have that you do either daily, weekly, monthly, you know, just, uh, I don't know, either to keep your mind, <laughs> you know, in the right place or your organization or anything like that, that might be helpful to people that are looking to start a business. I think it's important to not get swallowed by your business. So to keep some me time is really important. I try to work out a couple times a week. Um, if there's a launch, it's two times a week. If there's no launch going on five times a week, even just a half hour, I do at-home workout programs. I love to read personal development books. So I try to make time for that every day and set aside for set aside time for me to be able to grow as a person. And I love yoga. It's very calming. So if there's something stressful going on, I just put it away, do some yoga and come back to it. But there's no real daily ritual. Like I wake up at this time and it has to be at this time and I do this. There's no real schedule to that. Um, I just make sure that it does happen every single day. And then as far as like monthly rituals, I definitely write out my goals every month and I review them on a weekly basis. And then every quarter as well, I write big goals. What am I going to have accomplished by the end of this three month mark? And then I reverse engineer them and I try to stick to a plan, a weekly plan of how I'm going to get there. Hmm. And do you have a coach or something that you're working with? I'm not working with a coach right now, um, but I have had a business coach a couple years ago and I've had a Facebook coach and I really look up to like Gary V. I've seen him a few times um, going to a Tony Robbins and Gary V seminar next week. And I just love to read personal development, whether it's um, business related or emotional and mental related or even physically. I just want to absorb everything from everybody. I love learning from people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I actually used to be a huge, huge reader and actually I've moved a lot of that to podcasts now and to audiobooks. I find that that's even better. <laughs> you can pop that into your uh, headphones and off you go on your, on your workout or your run or your bike or whatever it is like that. Right. 
Oh, absolutely. I love pod. I love listening to podcasts. I love just researching a random new podcast. I listen to uh, Shalene Johnson and Amy Porterfield's podcast. And I think that, you know, you can get a lot more done. Even when I'm grocery shopping, I can listen to things like that or audio books. And when I'm folding laundry, I could do that as well. So I'm a huge multitasker and I get the information however I can. But I also like the feeling of curling up and reading a book. And I actually have written two books as well. So um, I go back and read those too sometimes. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You read your own books. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of them is a journal. So you um, fill it out every day and it like gets you thinking your affirmations and your goals and what you're grateful for. So I make sure to do that every day. And my kids do that as well every day and think it it puts a positive spin on everything going on. So sometimes being an entrepreneur is a little bit tricky. There's some challenges. And if you lose hope or you lose the motivation, you can get really negative. So it's really important to stay on top of being positive all the time to avoid that. Yeah, I find the same thing too. I find that anytime I'm sort of not feeling it, I just throw on a, a good audio book or maybe listen to a podcast. And it is amazing how you can be just completely reinvigorated through just listening to other people's passion, right? And it can be lonely working from home as well because, you know, you don't have, you know, that office camaraderie that you might have in, a, in, a, in an office. So you kind of have to make it yourself, right? Absolutely. I think that it's good to surround yourself with people who are in line with what you're doing, but at the same time, nothing beats silence. <laughs> so I love working in a quiet space. I love that I can work wherever I want to. I went on vacation last month to Florida and New York, and I was able to bring my computer with me. So it's a give and take, but I'd take it any day. <laughs> So now I know it's been a while since you've started your, your businesses. However, if you were, you know, starting all over again, what would be the first step that you would take, you know, in, in, uh, in building a business? Absolutely follow your passion. I think that is the drive behind everything. So I would say you need to decide what you love, find out what inspires you and just go after it. And then from there, you can do the research on how you can make money from it. But do not look for a get rich method because everything starts with passion and you don't want to just, if you're only driven by the money, this isn't the right opportunity for you. But if you're driven with, by creativity and something that you love to do and being unique and also the challenge, it's definitely worth it. So I think first you need to decide what you love to do, what makes you giddy inside when you think about it and what you could do every single day and it would never be enough. Then from there, you can decide, okay, how do I turn this into a business? So then that's the next question. Then how would, how would you go about doing that? Like, let's just say that you figured out what it is that your gift is, but you don't have any idea how to turn it into a business. What would you do then? Well, then I'd say you need to research what other people who have similar interests are doing and definitely learn a little bit about business so that you're business savvy. And there are great Facebook groups too. Mastermind groups are really a great way to get started because that's just a lump of people who are ready to help. Everybody has a different skill set. Everyone has a different strength. So that's a good place to get answers to your questions and even find people to help you on your team. Absolutely. And you know what? Nowadays, there's no excuse. I mean, there's tons of people that are out there that are ready to help you at any stage in the game. <laughs> you know, whether you're just sort of formulating your idea or whether your idea is starting to go south. I mean, there's always someone that you can reach out to that is willing to help you with that. And it's so easy to find them on Facebook nowadays, right? Absolutely. I mean, most of my team comes from mastermind Facebook groups. And, you know, if there's something that you're selling a product or something. Those usually those business models usually come with coaches ready to guide you and pretty much hand you all of the essentials you need to start your own business. So there's a lot of information out there. So speaking of coaches ready to guide you, what, uh, what's the one thing going on in your business right now that you're really excited about? I'm so excited to share my 
new products. We have um, my marketing tip report and my personal marketing makeover and then also a Q&A session. So basically, I look over your website and your Facebook pages. I audit them from many different angles, like the development, the design, the funnel strategy, all things related to Facebook, copywriting, content creation, social platforms, video, everything. And we just dive right in and I get my eyes on your stuff and give you a very honest critique. Very cool. So how do we find out more about this program? Well, you can go to my website at melissmarketing.com. It's Melissa, not Melissa. So M-E-L-I-S-S marketing.com. Or you can find me on Facebook at Facebook dot com slash Melissa marketing and there's a finding your dream customer guide that you can grab for free on my website and that'll take you to my marketing tip report and my personalized marketing makeover well that is awesome thank you so much for rocking out with me today Melissa this has been a lot of fun thank you so much for having me I really appreciate it Great. And to the listeners, make sure that you subscribe, rate, and comment on iTunes and also on Google Play. And we'll see you next time on the Work at Home Rockstar Podcast. Thanks for listening. To learn how you can become a Work at Home Rockstar or become a better one, head on over to workathomerockstar.com today.